Good morning, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church on this beautiful July 2nd Sunday morning as we prepare for the July 4th celebration on Tuesday, and as I understand it, there's quite a few people who have Monday off, so with 4th of July on a Tuesday, I guess we get a four-day weekend. I asked the question last night at the cafe service if next year when the 4th of July is on Wednesday, if we get five days off. (laughs) Nobody seemed to have the answer. So anyway, uh, I do have one announcement, and that announcement has to deal, do with the 4th of July. Uh, Every year we celebrate our independence, what our founding fathers signed to give us the freedom from England and what the Patriots did fighting the British, and we celebrate that. And I think we often fail to pray for the United States of America. So today, and moving forward, if we could remember to pray for our country, to pray for our elected officials, that they govern according to the will of God rather than their own will. I think our country can begin to be healed and turned around. And many years ago, I put together a uh, a prayer for our country. And I ended the little pamphlet with this biblical reference. Now, at the time... God spoke this reference. It was directed towards the Jews back in the Old Testament. 
but today I know it's directed toward us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And when we pray for our country, please don't let it be a one and done. It's something that we need to do every day. Thank you. Anybody else have any announcements? Okay. For those of you who are visiting with us today, thank you very much for coming to worship with us and a hearty welcome to you. All baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table. Uh, we believe that the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ is present under the elements of bread and wine. So, please stand as you are able. We begin our worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 through 9. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. The psalm will be res read responsibly, um, Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 15 through 18. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord our King to the Holy One of Israel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's reading is one of the rare instances where Jesus isn't being vague. No parables, just the series of clear statements. If you welcome a disciple, you welcome Jesus. If you welcome Jesus, you welcome the Father. If you welcome a prophet, you get rewarded as a prophet. If you welcome a righteous person, 
you get rewarded as a righteous person. And if you give a cup of water to a disciple, you get rewarded as a disciple. In short, welcome someone, get the same reward as them. Seems pretty straightforward, right? It might be tempting for those of us in church to hear Jesus telling us in this passage that we'll be rewarded if we become more welcoming. Being welcoming is a major concern of nearly all churches. The average church claims to be welcoming and writes it on its sign, hoping passers-by will read it and believe it and come to a service. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the single most common value statement across congregation is, we are welcoming, we are a welcoming congregation. Most pastors and congregations believe that if we can simply live up to our claims of being welcoming, then our churches and ministries will grow and we can spread the gospel. The fact is, our human condition never allows a universal welcome. All churches have their theological, social, and political leanings. If you agree with the church's leaning, you will feel welcome. If you don't, you won't. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be welcoming to new people and to each other. Of course we should. However, in this passage, here comes the kicker. Jesus doesn't call us to be welcoming. He calls us to be welcomed. Throughout the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel, Jesus prepares his disciples to go out into the world to participate in the ministry of God. Jesus commissions the disciples to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, and to spread the good news of Jesus. That is the lens through which we must read this passage. Jesus is not saying the disciples are to be rewarded for being welcoming to others. Rather, he is saying that the reward goes to others for welcoming the disciples. The heart of this passage is mission, that is, spreading the good news of Jesus. In the last few decades, more and more congregations and organizations have begun to base their understanding of ministry on this passage. They call themselves the missional church movement. And they believe the church no longer functions effectively as an institution of welcome, rather, they believe that Jesus calls the church to go out into its communities to be welcomed by others. The missional church movement believes that Christendom, the culture of Christianity that pervaded the West for over a thousand years, is dead. We no longer assume that our neighbor is a practicing Christian or that he or she even understands what the Christian church is. So if we can't assume that our neighbors know what church is, then we can't realistically expect them to come to a service. No matter how welcoming we claim to be, no matter how welcoming, welcoming we may actually be, we won't attract new people because most new people have no idea why we even exist. If we return to our passage today, we see that Jesus says it is our mission as disciples to go out and spread the good news of Jesus, to tell our neighbors why we, that is the body of Christ, exist. And Jesus says it is actually the responsibility of our neighbors to welcome us. Jesus says whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. When the disciples go out to minister to the world and spread the good news of the kingdom, those who welcome their ministry are, in effect, welcoming both Jesus and God the Father. So when we spread the good news to our neighbors, 
It is not actually we who are being welcomed, but Jesus. The hospitality Jesus expects our neighbors to extend to us is ultimately, ultimately not about us, but about him. Jesus says that whoever welcomes a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives a cup of water to a disciple will receive a disciple's reward. If we are wondering what the reward of a disciple is, we need only to look at a few verses back in the gospel where Jesus says, See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them. In Matthew, many of the rewards are neither earned nor positive. Rather, they are simply what the followers of Christ endure in this world. The life of a prophet, righteous person, and disciple is hard. Jesus never sugarcoats anything. He promises us that our lives as prophets, righteous persons, and disciples will be hard. And life won't be any easier for those who show us hospitality. Jesus calls us to walk out into the streets of Cocoa Beach, down the sidewalks of Main Street, and into the coffee shops proclaiming the good news. Yet we know that the human condition cannot allow a universal welcome. And so there is no promise that we will be welcomed. And there is no promise that the ones who welcome us will then be welcomed by others. The only promise is Jesus. As we heard today, whoever receives us receives Jesus and God the Father. This is the promise that Jesus made to us, that wherever we go, whenever we spread the good news, Jesus is always with us. And not just with us, but with the ones who welcome us. As Jesus walks beside us as we spread the good news, the one who welcomes us becomes disciples too. Though our work is rewarded with hardships that we do not earn, we are also rewarded by seeing the body of Christ grow. Jesus promises that as we go out into the world to spread the good news, we and those who welcome us will experience the rewards of hardship. With Jesus beside us, we can endure those hardships because we have hope. We endure the rewards of hardship and spread the good news because Jesus promises another unearned reward. Unlike humans who cannot live up to the standards of a universal welcome, at the end of days, Jesus has promised to welcome all of us into his kingdom, where there will be no more hardship, where we will dwell forever in the comfort, safety, and love of God. Jesus calls us to the hard road of mission, to throw ourselves at the mercy of our neighbors, but he promises to be with us every step, all the way into eternity. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. Let us profess our faith by reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst to catch the vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy. We pray for creation, for all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy. We pray for this nation and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislators, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for, all who are in, for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy. We pray for those in need. This morning I was asked to remember the people in Springfield, Illinois, who have been without power for the last four days as because a tornado has gone through. So Heavenly Father, we look for your blessings upon the people of Springfield. Help them to recover from the tornado as quickly as possible and show your blessings to all who live in that city through our Holy Spirit. We pray for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill, for any near death, and for all who grieve. God, in your mercy. We pray for our children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors, and mentors, pediatricians, and psychologists. God, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. This is my body broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood poured out for you, and as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you, and as you drink it, remember me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread, for we see the life you gave and the blood you shed, and we remember your wondrous love, you gave your body, you shed your blood, and we remember your wondrous love, you gave your body, you shed your blood. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God. And have a very safe 4th of July, everyone.
Yeah, if we want to try to do one, I don't know. I don't remember which one. I don't remember which one the. We did this, right? Draw the circle. 